Hi, my name is Jacob Kasperson, and I will be presenting on the 1992 London Ambulance Service Project. Uh, sorry, this presentation is a few days late. Uh, it really snuck up on me, and I didn't see it coming. But I thought I might as well go back and, and do the presentation, just so I could say that I've done it. So I wanted to pick this particular uh, software project crisis because it is the one I have I knew the least about and so I wanted to learn more about it and what happened I think that's always important to to do whenever we have the opportunity to study up on on something that we don't know too much about so about the ambulance service in London, it was the largest uh, at the time. I think it still is the the largest public uh, ambulance service in the world. It was uh, in the early '90s. It was serving close to seven million people. It had three hundred and eighteen total ambulances. Over two hundred of them were generally always in use. Uh, over seventy about 70 ambulance stations uh, distributed throughout the city and between 2,000 and 2,500 calls were received from the ambulance service every single day and 76 percent of their budget was directed to emergency response and over 50 percent of their employees, uh, the staff, was also dedicated to emergency response. So someone would call and they'd go pick them up and that was a huge part of their, their service. So the way that their service was working was a manual system where someone would call in, be like, hey, I need an ambulance. So the the call taker and the call center for the for the ambulance service would take their call, take down their address, find wherever it was on the map, uh, write down all their information that they need, put their their ticket, uh, you could say on a conveyor belt, and then it would wait, I guess, in turn, and then they would figure out what they needed. The resource identification would be. Once that was taken off the conveyor belt, they would identify, okay, what do we need to do to, to meet this need for whoever called in, and then they just mobilize and go get whoever was sick or needed help. So pretty straightforward thing, but I obviously pretty a lot of money just going into paying people to uh, work the the system so obviously they wanted to try to automate a lot of it so they came up with a plan for a new system the call center would be automatic so you would call in and a computer would answer like a lot of companies do today uh, the computer like the dispatching system would all be automated uh, so it would take in all the information uh, the information we give put onto computers, and then the dispatchers would rely on this this computer information, tell them where the people are, uh, what do they need, and et cetera, et cetera. So it was going to be a fairly large system, and they wanted to do a big bang release, which is put out the system, deploy the entire system all together, the whole nine yards everything was going is to be released together instead of unlike an incremental release so that was their plan unfortunately it was a disaster the disist this dispatch system was was faulty sometimes it would send more than one ambulance to the same place and would not some not send an ambulance maybe to another place um, 
calls could be lost due to excessive accepts, exception handling or exception messages. So sometimes people would call in and not even get on to the get into the dispatch system. So what also was a problem is that people would call and get dropped and then they'd call back again and the more a single person would call the more messed up the system would become on probably the biggest well not probably the biggest uh, problem that happened were obviously the 46 people that died due to this disaster of a system that came out the 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 call center and the dispatch system was just so bad that people did not get the aid that they needed and had they 46 of these people had they received the aid that they needed could have lived but they didn't and what's amazing is that the manual system I mean they, they deployed the they deployed the the automated computer system and they realized after a day that it was not going to be able to stand up by itself so the manual system was was brought back after a day and so they were using like both of them together but it still the computer part of the system was just not acceptable so it was completely shut down after eight days finally the causes of this uh, were there were a lot of known issues when it went live. It should not have gone live. It sh needed more testing. There were actually no load tests run at all. There was bad error handling, which had to do with the calls getting dropped with the exception messaging that that would actually break things a faulty user interface made it almost impossible for dispatchers or or clients to, or customers to use one of the major issues however was a memory leak which basically made it so when the system would enter in someone into uh, the conveyor belt, I guess, uh, is that it could just be completely lost. Or maybe you could get a person showing up again and again in the system, even after they had been treated. Sometime one there was one particular case where a a kid had or someone had a heart attack and they were waiting for an ambulance for six hours due to this bad memory leak. And then what happened is after the ambulance finally came and got them, four hours later, uh, it popped up again saying that this person needed an ambulance. And so they called and they're like, "Hey, do you need an ambulance still?" And uh, they were like, no, the ambulance came four hours ago. So it was completely, completely unserviceable and would not work. Here there are other couple of other issues of trying to reuse uh, hardware where new hardware should have been bought. Um, coming down to just people trying to cut costs at the expense of quality just not a good idea and this all goes back to the one of the most fundamental uh, one of the most often reasons for software disasters is the incomplete requirements especially when you're doing a big bang release requirements have got to be thorough they have got to be complete or the system is just not going to be functional and that was the case unfortunate case of the London ambulance service so that's my presentation I hope you enjoy it 
and thank you very much for watching.